Hello, my name is Dr. Aaron Drucker, and I'm a dermatologist in Toronto at the University of Toronto and Women's College Hospital and Women's College Research Institute. And I'm really pleased to be joining this International Eczema Council event to speak about comorbidities of atopic dermatitis and their pathogenesis, as well as some clinical implications. So what I wanna do in this session is first review epidemiologic evidence for a number of different comorbidities that have been associated with atopic dermatitis in the literature. I also wanna go through some uh, pathogenic mechanisms that might underlie these comorbidities. And then using that knowledge uh, from objectives one and two, try to integrate our understanding of these comorbidities, including their epidemiology and what might be underlying them into some clinical pearls. I also just wanna note that because of some previous presentations covering other topics, I'm not gonna be discussing atopic comorbidities uh, or mental health comorbidities such as anxiety or depression because they've been covered earlier. The first comorbidity that I'm going to discuss is disordered sleep. Uh, there have been a lot of epidemiologic studies uh, that have found increased rates of disordered sleep among people with atopic dermatitis. 11% of children with atopic dermatitis experience impaired sleep uh, more than four nights a week, and that goes up to about 22% of children who have severe atopic dermatitis. Adults with atopic dermatitis have three times the rates of insomnia compared with the general population. And these uh, disruptions in sleep can occur both because of disordered sleep initiation, but also sleep maintenance. In other words, trouble falling asleep and trouble waking up. People with atopic dermatitis also have increased parasomnias, increased daytime sleepiness, uh, as well as fatigue. And uh, while you know, it might seem intuitive, you know, why sleep is important because we all need to have a good night's sleep. Uh, it helps us feel uh, refreshed and generally well. Uh, there have been a number of studies that have shown that poor sleep and atopic dermatitis has consequences even beyond that. Uh, so uh, one really important study from Jonathan Silverberg uh, showed that uh, people who report having poor sleep as well as atopic dermatitis generally rate their overall health as being quite poor uh, relative to other people who don't have atopic dermatitis or who have atopic dermatitis without uh, poor sleep. Also having poor sleep associated with atopic dermatitis increases the risk of emotional and conduct problems, of headaches, uh, potentially a short stature in children with atopic dermatitis, also increased rates of attention deficit hyperactivity disorders, as well as increased rates of injuries. So in addition to just not feeling all that well, uh, there are other potential health consequences down the line in people who have atopic dermatitis associated with sleep disorders. Now, uh, there is some good news in terms of this association between atopic dermatitis and sleep. And that is because uh, the sleep disruption is most likely directly related to the symptoms of atopic dermatitis, namely itch, preventing people from uh, falling asleep and uh, from staying asleep. Uh, when we treat atopic dermatitis effectively, particularly for people with more severe disease, their uh, ability to sleep improves. And so these are a number of different line graphs from different clinical trials for different agents in people with moderate to severe atopic dermatitis, showing that whether it's an older agent like azathioprine, uh, dupilumab, or uh, something uh, new, a Janus kinase inhibitor like baricitinib, when you effectively treat atopic dermatitis, that uh, people's sleep improves along with it. Uh, and so that's really good news because uh, disrupted sleep is a comorbidity that we as dermatologists uh, can mostly work to improve on our own. Um, and so, you know, what do I think in terms of clinical implications? Well, uh, first of all, I ask about sleep during clinic visits with uh, people with atopic dermatitis. Uh, I ask them how bad their itch is and how uh, their sleep is doing, because that tends to be a marker of overall disease severity and impact. And uh, it's not that I necessarily change my treatment based on their answers to that, but it gives me a sense of uh, how their sleep is doing, whether I'm uh, under treating them uh, or appropriately uh, managing their symptoms of atopic dermatitis. Uh, People often ask whether uh, this association with uh, sleep disruption 
warrants a visit to a sleep specialist. And uh, in my opinion, it does not, uh, unless the patient uh, has sleep disruption that persists despite good control of skin disease. I've spoken about this with uh, some sleep medicine colleagues and they agree that uh, unless sleep disruption goes beyond uh, what we would expect for a patient with uncontrolled atopic dermatitis, that they don't necessarily need to see them. But of course, if a sleep disruption persists despite overall good control of the atopic dermatitis, that might be a reason to refer. The next comorbidity that I'm gonna discuss uh, is a group of comorbidities all under this bundle of cardiovascular disease. And there have been a number of epidemiologic studies that have looked at this issue. And uh, these were summarized in a 2019 systematic review and meta-analysis uh, that looked at a whole host of atopic comorbidities, or excuse me, atopic dermatitis and a whole host of cardiovascular comorbidities. Uh, and it found that angina was increased uh, 18% compared to the general population in people with atopic dermatitis, ischemic stroke increased by 17%, and heart attacks increased by uh, 12%. And it's important to note that in these meta-analyses that I'm showing you here, these are all prospective studies, uh, not cross-sectional data. So when you follow people forward with atopic dermatitis over time, they seem to have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. But these uh, increases in the relative risks are small. An 18% increased risk is not very large. Uh, and even that is larger than the 12% increased risk seen for uh, myocardial infarction or heart attacks. Um, but one interesting finding uh, from that meta-analysis that um, you know, maybe should give us a little bit more pause about this comorbidity is that they were able to look at these associations and stratify them by uh, the patients included atopic dermatitis severity. And uh, there were some limitations of this analysis, namely that they were relying on treatment patterns to determine atopic dermatitis severity for the most part. But still, you can see that there's a dose response effect where people with more severe atopic dermatitis uh, have more, uh, have a higher increased risk of these different cardiovascular comorbidities. And uh, for this top purple line here, uh, myocardial infarction, you can see that it goes up to, to around a relative risk of about two. The confidence intervals are really wide on this analysis, so we can't be all that confident in these associations, but it does seem like atopic dermatitis might confer an increased risk uh, of cardiovascular comorbidities, uh, and that that risk is particularly accentuated among people who have more severe atopic dermatitis. Now, why might this be? Well, uh, we know from uh, the psoriasis literature that it appears that the inflammation associated with that skin disease seems to drive a lot of the associations seen between psoriasis and cardiovascular disease, and certainly inflammation could play a role uh, for their relationship between atopic dermatitis and cardiovascular risk. There are a whole bunch of mediators that could be playing a role, such as sleep disruption, which itself is associated with cardiovascular disease. Same for depression, different treatments like oral corticosteroids might increase the risk of uh, of cardiovascular disease. Atopic dermatitis has been associated with uh, smoking and obesity, uh, with diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, low physical activity. So there are a whole bunch of factors that are associated with atopic dermatitis that could in turn increase cardiovascular risk. Uh, and then there are also a few uh, variables that could confound this relationship. So we know that asthma is associated with cardiovascular disease and atopic dermatitis is associated with asthma. Uh, same for socioeconomic status and uh, a few studies that have found uh, ethnicity to be a factor in terms of atopic dermatitis persistence and severity. And so uh, we're not exactly sure uh, what is driving this relationship. Perhaps the most uh, interesting uh, is this potential link uh, between inflammation and cardiovascular risk and atopic dermatitis. And again, that is the hypothesis for uh, a lot of the associations seen with psoriasis. Um, and Emma Gutman uh, and a number of her collaborators have been looking at this with uh, cardiovascular imaging studies, uh, with um, serum inflammatory marker uh, profile studies, and have found an increase in uh, cardiovascular markers and in vascular inflammation in people with atopic dermatitis and particularly in people with more severe atopic dermatitis. So uh, what's my 
takeaway. My takeaway is that there's probably some association between atopic dermatitis and cardiovascular comorbidities. I'm not exactly sure what's driving it, but the most important thing to me is that the absolute risk difference is really low. Uh, when you look at uh, one of the better cohort studies that's been done to date on this topic uh, from Silverwood et al. Uh, in the British Medical Journal, uh, what they found was that absolute difference uh, per 100,000 person years was quite low, 18 for unstable angina, 12 for myocardial infarction, 25 for stroke, an inverse association with cardiovascular death. And so that's really reassuring uh, that probably if there is an increased risk, it doesn't increase the risk by all that much. Now, that still, uh, it still means that our patients with atopic dermatitis should still be having age-appropriate screening, preventive measures uh, for cardiovascular risk that anyone with even without atopic dermatitis would be undergoing, coordinated by their primary care uh, practitioner. Uh, patients should be counseled to uh, exercise and quit smoking. And right at this point, you know, what we might all be wondering is, is there evidence to suggest that we should treat their atopic dermatitis in a certain way to impact their cardiovascular risk? And I think at this point, we don't really have uh, that data to suggest that we ought to be treating uh, atopic dermatitis more aggressively in order to make an impact on cardiovascular disease. There's no evidence to suggest that. And even for psoriasis, where there's more evidence for the association to begin with between psoriasis and cardiovascular disease, most studies have been disappointing in terms of treating inflammation of psoriasis and improving cardiovascular outcomes. So uh, at this point, I think uh, patients ought to have their age appropriate screening and treatment, but we don't need to act specifically on atopic dermatitis uh, related to cardiovascular risk. Moving on now to uh, autoimmune diseases that are associated with atopic dermatitis. This was a large study from a group in Denmark that uh, found that atopic dermatitis uh, was associated with more than double the odds of, uh, of having another autoimmune condition, uh, more than three times the odds of having two or two autoimmune conditions, and uh, more than five times the odds of having three or more autoimmune conditions. So people with atopic dermatitis are at higher risk of developing other inflammatory and autoimmune conditions, including multiple comorbidities at the same time. And in that study, they looked at a whole host of different autoimmune conditions to come up with those numbers. And what I've done here is highlighted in orange the different diseases that they looked at where they did find an association and everything that's left uh, in white, they did not find an association. So most uh, autoimmune comorbidities that these investigators looked at were associated with atopic dermatitis. And what's the reason for this? Well, most likely it's related to a genetic uh, predisposition to develop uh, autoimmune and inflammatory conditions. There are a number of immune mediated genes that are associated with atopic dermatitis risk. Often when we're talking about genetic risk for atopic dermatitis, we focus on epidermal proteins uh, and other proteins that impact the epidermal barrier. Uh, but there also are a number of inflammatory related genes that are associated with atopic dermatitis and that are associated with other autoimmune conditions and inflammatory conditions as well. Uh, and so that's likely what underlies the risk. Of course, there could be shared uh, environmental triggers that we don't understand very well, but uh, to me, most likely it's related to this uh, genetic predisposition to developing inflammatory conditions. Uh, so what are the clinical takeaways for these autoimmune associations with atopic dermatitis? Well. I don't think any screening is warranted. I don't think we need to go looking for autoimmune conditions in people with atopic dermatitis, uh, but there are potential therapeutic implications. Uh, we're entering a really exciting time in atopic dermatitis where there are going to be a lot of new therapies developed, and you've heard about a lot of those earlier today. Uh, that includes Janus kinase inhibitors, and those have been used to treat a whole bunch of uh, autoimmune conditions. And so studies have shown that uh, Janus kinase inhibitors can uh, improve alopecia areata. Uh, there were case reports on this uh, over the last few years. And more recently, we're beginning to see randomized controlled trial data that also shows that Janus kinase inhibitors can work for alopecia areata. And you heard earlier how well they can work for atopic dermatitis. Dupilumab also uh, has had case reports that show that it can improve alopecia areata in people who are being treated for atopic dermatitis. Uh, also recently, uh, Emma Gutman had a randomized controlled trial of dupilumab for atopic dermatitis published, which uh, did not meet its primary outcome, um, 
but uh, was relatively small. And so I think there may still be some questions to be answered about whether dupilumab has a role to treat alopecia areata. Uh, JAG genus kinase inhibitors, JAK inhibitors have also been used to treat uh, vitiligo, which is another condition associated with atopic dermatitis, uh, as well as inflammatory bowel disease, which has been associated with atopic dermatitis as well. Um, so uh, I think where we're headed is for a lot of our patients who have atopic dermatitis and autoimmune comorbidities, as well as other comorbidities, we're going to start being able to select our therapy, particularly people with more moderate to severe disease who uh, require systemic therapy. We're going to start thinking about their comorbidities when we're picking what therapy to choose. Right now, our options are very limited uh, here in Canada and uh, I know in the U.S. as well. At this point, it's only dupilumab that's approved for atopic dermatitis, but we're going to have more options going forward. And so I really like this paper from uh, the JAD uh, that looked at psoriasis and discussed how to tailor treatment based on comorbidities. Um, so I really like that approach, and hopefully we'll get to that point where we can be doing the same sort of thing for atopic dermatitis. The final comorbidity uh, that I would like to review is the potential association between atopic dermatitis and osteoporosis and fractures. This association is less well studied than some of the other comorbidities that I've discussed uh, previously, but uh, there were a number of cross-sectional studies, including uh, from Dr. Silverberg, that uh, showed atopic dermatitis, uh, people with atopic dermatitis had uh, an increased association with uh, osteoporosis, fractures, different kinds of injuries. And in this more recent uh, cohort study, using data from the United Kingdom, uh, Lowe et al. found that atopic dermatitis, and particularly severe atopic dermatitis, increased fracture risk. And uh, they found an increase to, uh, increased overall fracture risk by about 10% among people with atopic dermatitis compared to people without. And that was variable between different types uh, of fracture, uh, with the most pronounced association associations seen with spine fracture. But these associations, you know, they're, they're pretty low, you know, similar to cardiovascular disease, 10%, 18%. Uh, these numbers are not huge, but those numbers do go up significantly when you start to look at people with more severe atopic dermatitis, where the risk of spine fractures is more than doubled. Um, the risk of pelvic fractures is about 66% elevated and hip fractures about 50% elevated. So those numbers start to become uh, more substantial in people who have more uh, severe atopic dermatitis. So why might that be? Well, there are studies that have shown that inflammation in general uh, leads to increased bone turnover, uh, potentially decreased bone quality. Um, and so that could uh, potentially be what's uh, happening here. Uh, it's also possible that uh, itch and poor sleep uh, cause a predisposition to injury in general uh, because people might be uh, more distractible um, or uh, have a harder time uh, paying attention. Um, and that might predispose them to getting injured in general, which might you know, then predispose some of those people to develop a fracture if they get injured. Uh, and I mentioned earlier that uh, Dr. Silverberg did have a study that showed that in people with uh, atopic dermatitis and uh, sleep disruption, there was a further increase in the risk of injury. Uh, my uh, favorite theory though is that a fracture risk is related to corticosteroid use. Uh, I'm skeptical that uh, topical corticosteroid use increases fracture risk, although there was a recent epidemiologic study published in JAMA uh, Dermatology by Egerberg et al. that did find that high cumulative doses of topical steroids increase fracture risk. Uh, but rather, I think that risk that we're seeing in people with more moderate to severe atopic dermatitis might be related to their use of uh, high dose uh, oral corticosteroids over time, uh, and uh, that that might be what's predisposing them to fracture. And of course, that might be a particular concern in people with comorbid asthma, where uh, flares of asthma are also treated with oral corticosteroids. So uh, in summary, uh, I've selected a number of uh, comorbidities that I think uh, are interesting from an epidemiologic point of view and also have some potential clinical implications. Uh, with regards to sleep disruption, uh, I would encourage you to ask your patients with atopic dermatitis how their sleep is doing, whether their atopic dermatitis is impacting their sleep, uh, and use that as a marker of disease control and severity. 
Uh, in terms of cardiovascular disease, while it's an interesting comorbidity and warrants further study, uh, at this point, I don't think there are any screening or treatment recommendations that we can make related to cardiovascular disease that are specific to atopic dermatitis. With regards to autoimmune conditions, I think there are a number of potential therapeutic implications and hopefully many more in the future as we figure out what systemic medications we can use to treat multiple autoimmune comorbidities in the same patient. Uh, and for osteoporosis and fractures, uh, my suggestion is to pay attention to oral corticosteroid use. And in people who have reached a certain threshold of oral corticosteroid use uh, and have reached a certain fracture risk based on that threshold, that uh, we ought to be considering bone protective therapy such as bisphosphonates uh, and discussing that with uh, their primary care uh, team. Thank you all uh, for listening uh, to my talk on the comorbidities of atopic dermatitis and pathogenesis. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with all of you. Uh, and of course, we'll be happy to take any questions during the question and answer period. Thank you.